What I know for sure is sometimes we have to take an honest look in the mirror and recognize that on many days we are in our own way. Self-sabotage will kill more dreams than anything else. Hey Beacon, thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bounce Back Blueprint Community Podcast. I am your Bounce Back Guide, Tiffany Huff Struthers, and I'm excited to have you here with me today for another episode. This week's episode is actually being brought to you by the Stop Whining and Write Masterclass. And this is a free masterclass for you if you are ready to set yourself free by breaking through the myth of writer's block to share your story. And guess what? It's free, but you do need to register. And you can get the link to register in the show notes, bit.ly slash stop whining and write. We will be doing the class on Tuesday, June 2nd. So make sure you reserve your spot. Now let's dig into this week's episode. This week, I wanted to dig into some of the ways that we sabotage ourselves. Sometimes we can get into a space where we play the blame game, right? Especially when we are on this bounce back journey and we are working hard to trust God. We are working hard to be diligent and sharing our stories, doing the work to, you know, impact and bless others. There are days when Things are challenging. Actually, there are weeks. Sometimes there are months. But what I want you to remember is that the word says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You don't want to be the weapon that is forming against you. And so in this episode, I am sharing 10 ways that I have been the weapon formed against myself in the past. Because I've taken many for the team and I do not want you to have to grow through what I did. So even if you feel like these don't apply to you, just take note because it might be able to help sister so-and-so or it might jog your memory when you get into a certain situation ship. Um, But I need you to know that the bounce back journey is one that you are consistently reflecting and checking yourself on so that you don't become the weapon that is formed against you. So here we go. These are 10 things that I had to be willing to call out and confront so that I could begin the journey to conquering them. And they aren't in any particular order. Um, You can rank them according to how they are impacting your journey right now. And of course, your journal is a judgment-free zone. So what you write there is between you and the Lord, and you don't have to worry about anybody else seeing, knowing, hearing. Number one, fear. I was punking myself. The list of things I feared was never ending. I feared trying and succeeding. Most days, more than I feared failing. I feared what people would say, what people would think. I feared losing friends. And I also feared added responsibility. I was just scared. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't have fear, right? You are human. We are human. We are going to experience fear. It's a part of life. Um, The difference, though, is being able to um, accept the feeling of fear and move forward and do the thing anyway, right? It is focusing on your faith over the fear, right? And it is really um, even being honest enough with yourself to be able to accept the truth that you are afraid of something, be it failure or success. And whatever fears you have associated with this bounce back journey, right? Um, oftentimes it is the fear of people asking this one question, who does she think she is, right? When we have growth and other people do not, or when we begin to walk in our truth, to share our truth and other people are not, it is um, a reflection of that, right? We become a spiritual mirror and people will get very defensive and it can challenge our Um, existing relationships. And so I want to encourage you to have the foresight to forgive people um, on the journey. When you choose to break through the fear, trust God and do it anyway. 
other people will become frightened. And it's not you, it's their own projections, it's their own insecurities, but you need to keep that in mind. And so, you know, as you journal through these um, 10 self, 10 ways of self-sabotage, I want you to really ask yourself, how have I been punking myself? How have I been allowing fear to hold me back? Number two, being stingy. Yes, I was being stingy with myself. I made excuses after excuses for why I did not have the money to invest in myself. And I want to be very clear. It wasn't that I was not spending money on myself, but I was not investing in myself. I was spending money. I was wasting money. You know, I had opportunities to attend workshops, networking events, take classes, um, but I wanted to do other things with my money, right? And I prioritized being passive in my purpose, you know, and maybe you are prioritizing being passive in your purpose as well. And I want to encourage you because, you know, if God was being passive with what you needed or what you prayed for, what would your life be like? And, and you have to recognize the power that is within you, the power of your story, the power of what God has purposed and positioned you to do and the repercussions of you being passive and being passive in the way that you refuse to invest in your purpose. You refuse to invest in yourself. Where are you spending money um, that you know you could be investing in yourself? While you're praying and asking God for more so that you can do and be and have certain things, he's wondering what you are doing or why you aren't stewarding better what's already in your hands. Number three, running with chicks. I knew I wanted to soar. I knew I was called to fly above living at ground level, right? I knew that God was preparing me, had been preparing me for elevation, but I was running with women who did not have similar aspirations. For them, flying was not a priority. And I can't blame them, right? Chicks are not prioritizing flying. Chicks do their business and live their best lives by running around. They don't have to fly. Eagles were created to fly. They were created to soar. And so if you are called to be an eagle, then when you're running with chicks, you are wasting your time because you weren't created to run. You were created to get to a certain level and soar, right? And when you get to that level, it is from up high that you are up able to observe what is going down below. You are able to observe what God has for you and you are able to observe when it's ready for you to get it, right? When an eagle is in the sky and soaring, they are able to clearly observe their prey, their food, right? Their their provision. And they are able to see when the right time is to come down to get their provision and then go back up so that they have what they need to do what God is calling them to do. And I have to tell you that if you have some A1s that are day or some A1s from day ones that are chicks, that is fine. They can um, be successful in their lane, but you need to recognize whether or not your lane is next to theirs, Right. Chicks will never understand the eagle's need to soar. And so I had to recognize that, you know, some of my favorites, right? Some of my besties weren't even running with me. So not only was I running when I should be soaring, but they weren't running. They were still walking or tiptoeing. So is the company you keep, right? The company that you're choosing to keep, is it sabotaging you from success um, on this bounce back journey. Number four, saying yes. I had to learn that when I said yes to people, to going places and to doing things that no longer served me, I was saying no to myself. And to be quite honest, I was saying no to God. And we have to understand that exercising the power of no, in many cases, is really Increasing the voice of a victor that it takes on this bounce back journey to share your story with power. And when you are saying yes, 
This is one of the surefire ways to be the weapon formed against yourself, right? Because we will um, be whining and praying to God about what we can't do and what we aren't able to do. Um, but it's really because of some of the things that we've said yes to that we're not in alignment with our divine assignment. So really evaluate what you're saying yes to that maybe you need to consider saying no to. And this is something that is apparent from um, your planner or your schedule. It's apparent in your bank account. It may be apparent in your bedroom, um, maybe even in your social media feeds, right? What are you saying yes to where God is calling you to say no? Number five, laziness. Yes, I am trusting that this is a judgment free zone and I am being completely and 100% transparent when I tell you, like I said, I was extremely passive in my purpose and I just didn't feel like living purposefully. Don't judge me. You know, like I do, that it is much easier to just be who you are than to do the work to become who God is calling you to be. I voluntarily opted to be less than. Mediocrity is not of God. God does not do anything with mediocrity. He is the creator of creators, right? He is the alpha and the omega. There is nothing mediocre about anything God has created or produced and you are not the exception to that rule. And because you were made in his image to choose mediocrity, is blatant disobedience. And so I have to be honest and say, yes, I was being disobedient. I was being disobedient by delaying my action because I was choosing to be lazy. And we don't think about it this way when we say, I don't feel like it or I don't want to, but that's exactly what you're doing. You don't value the purpose that has been placed on your life enough to recognize that You know, once you know what your purpose with revelation comes responsibility. So I want you to clearly and honestly consider how laziness is sabotaging your success and your ability to move from setback to impact and income. Number six, self-doubt. This is a big one. When, especially if you are struggling to um, trust God, right? If you if you haven't already, go back and listen to the series about trust issues. But if you are struggling to trust God, if you don't believe God, then it's going to be very hard for you to believe in yourself because he created you, right? So that was the struggle that I had for a very long time. I doubted that I could actually achieve some of the things I knew without question that I was created to be and do. I was paralyzed by attempts to do something new that had not yielded the results I expected it to in the past. Doubt was defeating me. And here's the thing that I learned. Your expectations will cause you frustration. Let me repeat that. Your expectations will cause you frustration. This is why it's so important to trust God and focus on your faith and move accordingly. Do not lean on your own understanding because what you ex- what you have um, determined to be success or what expectations you place on something that God has given you to do may be completely out of alignment with what the success or the manifestation looks like that he has planned for you. And so you have to get to a place where you stop doubting yourself because you are doing what God said, period, and let that be enough. Because you believe in God and because God created you, you believe in yourself and you're going to move forward accordingly, period. So, you know, jot down a list of the things that you know you were called and created to do that you are doubting you can do. And then I would challenge you to get into the word and find some scriptures that negate that. And I, you know, also, like I said at the beginning, You don't want to be the weapon that forms against yourself. So perhaps, you know, that is an affirmation that you start to use. I will not be the weapon that forms against me. I will not be the weapon that forms against me. I will not allow self-doubt to be the weapon that forms against me. Write that down, sis. Write that down. All right. Number seven, waiting. 
I was setting indefinite deadlines to get started. Indefinite deadlines to get started. Any reason I could come up with not to take action, I used it. I had to wait for payday. I had to wait until after the holidays. I had to wait for my tax refund. I had to wait for the weather to break. I had to wait for the first of the month, the 30th of the month, the next month, the next quarter. <laughs> I had to wait until I lose weight. Any excuse that I could come up with, any milestone that I could foresee coming, I used it as an excuse. And God is calling us to excellence in this season. There is no room for excuses. What have you been saying you're waiting on? And in fact, you might be saying you're waiting on God. And I came through today to tell you God is waiting on you. Maybe he hasn't revealed the whole plan because he wants to know if he can trust you with the one thing that he's already revealed that you need to do. You are not waiting on God. He is waiting on you. That's a whole word. Number eight, shame. Shame will wear you down when you are on a bounce back journey from a very personal um, experience. And when it knocks you so low that you almost can't see the top, right? When you've made decisions that contributed to that knockdown, to that blow being so hard, shame will creep in. And when I was experiencing the shame of, you know, bouncing back of, um, you know, getting my footing, I remember someone saying to me, you fell off, you know, <laughs> you know, like, and then, and in that in that space at that time, I wasn't in a place where I could hit on back with, you know, in my Drake voice. I had someone tell me I fell off. Oh, I needed that. That wasn't what I needed in that season. It just, you know, was like someone kicking me while it was down. And what I did was I disguised my shame as wanting people to mind their business. But the truth was that I was just not very comfortable with removing the bandages from my wounds. I wasn't comfortable with telling my story openly, even though that is exactly what God had called and equipped me to do. And I know now that my purpose was born, you know, of much of my story, my pain and keeping it to myself was defeating my purpose. And so I want you to really consider is the shame so strong, you know, are you allowing the shame to be so big that your purpose is being defeated? Let that sink in for a minute. Number nine, busyness, doing the most. You know, I really want you to consider when you think about busyness, when you're doing the most, are you doing what is most important, right? It's great to have a to-do list and be able to check off 10 things a day and feel like you've done all of the things and been all of the places and bought all of the stuff. But are you doing the most or are you focused on doing what's most important? Because what we will do is fill our schedules with the most and then tell ourselves we don't have time. And I was in this season living in a place where every second of every day and much of the next day was accounted for. Like from the moment I woke up, I was on the go till the moment my eyes closed at night. And sometimes before my eyes closed at night, I was already almost in the next day. I had to really look at how I was spending my time and realized I needed to be more intentional with investing my time, right? If you want a return on the investment for the things that you are doing, you need to be intentional about being selective about what you are investing in and why. You know, if you have goals for the year, if you have a vision for the year, if God has given you a director for a year or a season, when you go to um, schedule something, it has to fit into whatever those parameters are. 
And if it doesn't, even if it's a great friend or a good cause, things can be good all day. But really in this season, when you're bouncing back, you need to focus on the God things. Period. You have to prioritize your purpose. You have to prioritize um, what God is calling you to do. And that is not to say to um, cut people off or shut people out, but it's really about using discernment and knowing that when you are taking care of God's business, he will take care of yours and how people receive your obedience is none of your business. God can handle that. Last, but certainly not least, I struggled with control. It had to be done by me because it had to be my way or it was wrong or it was imperfect. I would pray and then try to make it happen myself anyway. I was always in the way because I would not ask for help. Or when I did ask for help, I was overly critical. Um, I was micromanaging it or I was constantly doing it over anyway because of my need for control was so strong and that was strongly rooted in my not trusting God. Right. And so if you have a need to be in control all of the time, it's likely that you are still challenged with, with trusting God. And I can tell you right now that your need for control will cause consistent conflict. It will cause consistent conflict and the conflict will, um, overflow specifically if you are not willing to recognize that you have challenges with being in control, right? Contrary to what popular belief says, only the strong surrender. And so it takes a strong woman to be able to surrender to God and recognize that the idea of control is an illusion anyway, and trying to maintain it is simply going to exhaust you. And keep you in a space where you feel like you aren't making any progress because you're trying to hold on to too many things at one time. And so I am challenging and encouraging you to release. Make peace with release. Specifically, make peace with release of being in control. And when you have control issues, you will find yourself whining a lot, right? You'll be whining about all of the things that aren't going right, all of the things you can't get done, all of the people who won't do what you thought or expected them to do. And the whining that comes as a result of not being in control and every all of the other um, self sabotagers that I shared in this episode is the reason why I am hosting the Stop Whining and Write Masterclass on June 2nd. So I want you as soon as you are done listening with this episode to click the link in the show notes and register for the masterclass. If you're finally ready to break through these self sabotages, break through the myth of writer's block and start um, writing for your life, then you want to be part of this masterclass. Also, of course, if you have not already, be sure to leave a review. When you do, you make it much easier for other beacons of light and hope who are on this bounce back journey to find the podcast and be blessed just as you have been. Remember, God is not going to play you, but if you are in the business of self-sabotage, you are playing yourself.